bundling. Bundling is a process of selling two or more items as a package. Have you been to a restaurant and they give you options to order food either a la carte, you can individually order items, or you can order a buffet or a, a full dish. And you can see that they give you both of those options. When they give you a buffet where you can eat whatever you want, that is a form of bundling. They are bundling the dessert, they are bundling the main dish, they are just bundling the starters all together in one package. That is bundling. And we see bundling all in so many situations. In uh, When you buy a car, you try to buy a car, they can sell you a standard package car, which has the standard options. Or you can just buy without a package, like with no options, and that's like individually you can upgrade, or you can buy a premium package. So that's bundling. Bundling is used when customers have heterogeneous demand, meaning they value one thing more than the other. Certain customers will value item two, in this case dessert, way more than the starters, item one. So if let's say item one was a starter and we're talking about a restaurant, then you will find that uh, there are certain customers who really like item one and certain who like sweets, dessert. So like D is willing to pay $90 for the starter and only willing to pay $10 for the sweet. Maybe D has diabetes, yeah? A is willing to buy starter only for 10 bucks. It's like, let's get straight into you know, the desserts or the main dish, yeah? So A is saying, I can only buy item two or sweets um, for $90. $90 is what I'm willing to buy sweets for, but I'm only willing to pay $10 for the starter. So similarly, you will have various types of customers, customers with different demands. And this bundling works specifically when you have a negative correlation. If you want item one more, then you want item two less, item two more, then item two less. So when you have a negative correlation, uh, and not like a positive correlation, then bundling really helps to extract more of the consumer surplus. As a, as a producer, you can extract more of the consumer surplus uh, for you. So customers with heterogeneous demand, where they want one item more than the other item, and you can, you can start to see and get customers, and you plot your customer's reservation price, is a reservation price. Like I'm willing to pay $90 for item two um, and I'm willing to pay only $10 for item one. If you know your customer's reservation price, you can plot them into these two items that you're trying to sell to them. And in reality, you may even sell like 15, 20 items. So you can look at each of these items in combination and find out where do your customers lie. And if you see a negative correlation, there is a possibility that you can pick uh, various types of bundles where you can package these two items together in such a way that you can extract as a producer way more surplus from your consumers. So let's look at that, yeah? So let's build on this example more. We know customer A is willing to buy item one, in this case starter, for 10 bucks, and item two for 90 bucks. Opposite is customer D, $90 for starters, $10 for sweets. B and C are somewhere in the middle. They're like, they equally value both of them, but as you can see, A and B is connected via this line of you know this negative correlation where B and C are also in that same negative correlation. B is willing to pay $55 for item two and 45 for uh, item one and similarly for C. So if we have this and we also know that item one starters, they cost you $20. So you can even plot this red line that says the hey, marginal cost for producing item one, my starter is $20. For my sweets, item two is $30. So you know these people above are actually good for me if they buy it individually for uh, for my item two, and similarly, these people above this line is good for me if they buy item one, item um, one separately, yeah? So we know how we constructed this two by two and assuming we just have two items to be sold. Now, what kind of prices can we charge them? So let's look at that. Well, we can charge them various types of prices. We can uh, have these three approaches, 
to pricing. We can have approach one where we sell both of these items individually. Say, hey, a la carte, pick. If you want uh, a starter, you pick a starter. If you want a dessert, you pick a dessert. Approach two is when we sell them as a bundle. Say, hey, we have a buffet and that's it. We don't allow you to, um, we don't sell individually. Uh, and so we, but we charge a higher price, $100. So item one, 50 bucks, item two, I will sell for 90 bucks, but I don't have a buffet, yeah? No buffet in, in approach one. I have a buffet, but I don't have individuals in approach two, and I can have the mixed approach, mixed bundle, where we have individual items and a buffet price. But notice, the individual price is much higher, and the buffet price is also much higher than the single bundle, yeah? So I have these three approaches. Now, let's see which of these approaches is more profitable, yeah? Now, if assume I have approach one, which of these four customers will actually buy my goods? Approach one basically says, I will sell item one for 50 bucks. Which of these customers will buy item one for 50 bucks? So we can start to see that A's reservation price for item one is $10. So they're not gonna be happy to buy item one for 50 bucks. But B will, because their reservation price is 55. Um, and C and D will also buy it if their reservation price is uh, about 50 bucks. So I'm gonna change this. So this is 50 and this is also 50, yeah? So if it is 50 and 50, B, C and D will buy it, yeah? Um, so that's clear. We will see B, C and D whose uh, reservation price is above or equal to 50, 50, 55, and 90, they will be my customers. So you'll see B, C, and D will buy my items, yeah? And I'm selling them at 50. They have reservation price at 50, 55, and 90. So you start to see the B, C, and D will buy, but A will not buy my item one individually because that reservation price is 10, it's way below 50. Similarly, item two in approach one, I'm saying, I will charge you 90 bucks for item two. Uh, who can buy item two for 90 bucks? So customer D has a reservation price of 10 bucks, so they're out. 50, they're out. 55, customer B, they're out. Only A will buy at 90. So we see A will buy at 90. So if we sold those items individually, and assume we also have their overall budget. A's budget is 100 bucks, B's budget is 110 bucks, C's budget is 110 bucks, and D's budget is 100 bucks, yeah? So if each of them have this as their budget, we know that as long as it's within the budget and if the price is, um, if, if the price is affordable, meaning it's uh, below the reservation price, then they'll buy it, yeah? So now we know who will buy. So now we can calculate the profits. So how much are we selling them for? 50 bucks, three people are gonna buy, so three times 50 minus 20, which is the marginal cost, plus, a is gonna buy item two, so 90 minus 30, we get 150. So here, notice our profit when we sell individually is 150. In approach two, when we sell it as a bundle, can we do better? Let's check it out. If we sell it as a bundle, and if we know then the bundle is sold at 100 bucks, and we can satisfy each of them because look, their budget is greater than or equal to 100 bucks, and let's see, if A is going to pay 100, and uh, their budget is 100, and they are able to get item one at 10, and item two at 90, and they're on this budget line of 100, then A is in the game. They'll just buy the bundle, and they'll get A and B, because it satisfies their bundle price. Similarly, B will satisfy it, because uh, B's budget is 110. So 55 and 50, that's just 105, so B uh, budget is 110, they can afford 55 and 50, which is 105, so B is on. Similarly, C is on 105, and D is also on with 100 budget, yeah? So we start to see that in approach two, when we bundle, all of them are gonna buy at the bundle price. So now it's, now the profit is four times, because all four are buying, $100 for the bundle, minus the marginal cost of uh, 50 bucks for the bundle, bundled item of 20 item one and 30 item two, we get profit 200. So as just by bundling, we're able to attract all four of them uh, because we know their reservation price into, into selling them. So now also our profits just went up from 150 to 200. So now let's look at the third approach, which is combination of selling it separately 
and available bundle to be sold and but at a higher price so you're saying hey i will sell you these items separately but also as a bundle but look at that the individual prices are much higher uh if you, if you know if this one is higher than this one this one is slightly lower but still you know they are higher prices and the bundle price is also like slightly higher than the previous bundle price so now let's look at this can uh, customer a afford item one at eighty dollars customer a says i can only buy this at ten dollar reservation price individually at eighty i'm out because i cannot my reservation price is much lower so a is out then customer b would start to look at uh item one and be like hey can i buy this at 80 my reservation price 50 so i'm out i can only buy this at uh, 50 or lower but then they look at uh, the bundle price and then they realize oh i can buy the bundle at 105 meaning i can buy item one and item two at 105 and that's what my reservation price is so if, if the reservation price is 105 and let's assume b's reservation price is 105 and C's reservation price also 105, and the budget together is 105, then this satisfies. So they're like, hey, I can afford at 105 both of these items. So B will buy a bundle. Similarly, C will buy a bundle because 50 and uh, 55 for uh, item two and item one, and 55 and 50 for item two and item one for B and C. So B and C will buy a bundle because they can afford it, and their reservation price equal to the bundle price. So, so they're gonna be able to buy that. So B and C will buy the bundle. Similarly, customer D. Customer D will be like, hey, can I afford item one at 80? Their reservation price of item one is 90. So they're like, I'm willing to pay 90 bucks. So they can definitely buy item one at um, 80. So they'll buy just item one, but they'll not buy the, buy the bundle of 105. Because look, that budget is 100. Total reservation price for both of these items for them is 100. So even if they were to um, buy this bundle at 100, they cannot buy the bundle at 105 because they can only afford 100. So at best, they will, they will buy, um, customer D will buy item one, that's it. But they'll not buy item two. Yeah, because their reservation price for item two is 10, item two is available at 85, so they'll only afford item one, yeah? Similarly, item two, we do the same thing and we start to see that uh, customer D cannot afford item two, Customer A will afford only item one. B and C will go for the bundle. So now let's calculate the profits here. So we start to see that uh, if the bundle is available, let's say at 105, then uh, we change this a little. So A is gonna buy item D, yeah? And that's available at 80 minus, uh, so the profits would be 80 minus 20 because the marginal cost is 20. So that'd be 60 bucks. And then two of these are gonna buy the bundle at 105. Together the marginal cost is 50. So you will start to see that, uh, this will be I think uh, 25, yeah. So you will get uh, the bundle profit, one, 105 minus 50. And then you will start to see that um, customer A will buy item two. Yeah, customer A will buy item two. Item two's margin cost is 30, and they'll buy it at 85, so they'll get the total profit. So we start to see that uh, the profits have gone up from 150 to 200 to 225. The only thing I've changed is these prices, yeah? I played around with this price to give you an example. So now the bundle price is 105, and the profits or the reservation price uh, for each piece as given here. A is reservation total price is 100, B is 105, C is 105, D is 100. So when you do this, you start to see that our profits are now much bigger in the mixed strategy. So this is super helpful for us to find out, okay, what points, at what points am I gonna offer just item one and incentivize this customer to just I buy item one? Uh, or I just, just buy item one for like customers like D, or just buy item two for customers like A, and then bundling for customers like B and C. So when we do that, we quickly understand we can divide our customers into this, this segment. And uh, that segment is, is, I'll draw it in, in a separate area. So this is that segment. 
we can define item one I'm going to sell at this price item two I'm going to sell at this price and these are the people I'm going to uh, provide a bundling price yeah so given set of customers given your set of customers they have your, their reservation price you can def you can divide them into these three areas those customers who would only buy item two because their price is, uh, reservation price is uh, in greater than P2, those will only buy P1, and there'll be a mixed bag of customers who will buy the bundle, and thereby they'll get item one and item two at the bundle price. So you can, you can get uh, price two, price one for item one, item two, and then a bundle price for, uh, for folks in between. So you now have your customers that you can de define into these areas. And you can start to see folks who will buy the bundles, folks who will only buy one item or the second item. Yeah? And there'll be folks here in this area who will not buy because they just can't afford item two or item one or the bundle price. So you can start to define, like get, do marketing surveys to find out, okay, which customers win. So each dot is a customer's reservation price for item one and for item two. So once you have this plot, you can mathematically using a computer program, you can find out what price item one and item two you should set and what bundling price you should set to get the maximum profit. Maybe your computer will say, no, this is maybe a better price. Uh, maybe it's, you should, it should reduce it to a different price. So you will get an optimal price where the profits are maximal. You will know which item to sell at this price and above individually or this item sell at this price and above individually and what to sell it as a bundle and you can optimize the profits using how many customers you're able to get in to this fold because you lost out on all of these customers but you got these customers these customers and these customers so where your profits maximize is where you can sell and extract more customer surplus consumer surplus as a producer surplus and uh, further uh, if you cannot do price discrimination, you can you can do bundling much more effectively, and uh, especially when your demand is so heterogeneous, and it gives you the power of getting more and more profits.